Oh, yes. This is Paul Bear. You remember him, don't you? This is Percy Pringle the Third. You're on In Your Head. All right, and we are back. Welcome to In Your Head Wrestling Radio. I am the internet icon, handsome Jackie Jones, along with my right-hand man and the enforcer of the Headyverse. One-inch biceps, the power goat. Ah, how about that, Jack? Oh, <laughs> very powerful indeed. <laughs> We're joined. Off- I love that intro. <laughs> Great. <laughs> well, very good. I was I was hoping she just like I don't think I want to be on here and would hang up. But mm-hmm. you're already enjoying yourself. With- Not at all. Ah, that's well, always one of my biggest it, fears: is people just <laughs> hang up after I do that. So. <laughs> Now, former ballet manager and still very lovely Lady Blossom, Jeannie Clark, is on the line with us, and it's a pleasure to have you here with us. Thank you for inviting me. I appreciate that. It's great to be here. Cool. And uh, she is, she's up very late. It's over in England. It's like 1 o'clock in the morning. So I think that's uh, very it's very nice of you to stay up so late to uh, talk to us. Uh, that's fine. Thank you. Um, yeah, I'm a little bit tired, so hopefully... You know, I plod along okay. Um, I had uh, the sale of my house today it c- actually completed, and I, I got up at six. I was so excited because it's that it's been such a long process, all the packing and unpacking, and oh, it's a bit of relief to get that off my hands now. Yeah. But so uh, yeah, so it's well, a good day, uh, and being on here with you, so yeah. a very good day. Yeah, congratulations yeah. on that. Thank you. Now, I said manager, valet. Uh, do you consider what you did more of a, being a manager or a valet? Is there a difference? Um, I don't really think so. I think um, most people don't actually know. Um, they call it's a manager in England. They don't use the term valet. And I did actually work as a valet for Chris in 1978, 1979 in England. And <clears throat> they hadn't had any female valets at all at that time, so I was like the first ever female valet, and that was years before the um, work at the sportatorium. So I had, you know, they call it a, a manager or a second, like they, they do in boxing where, you know, they come in and they give you the water and the towel, and 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 you see that in boxing, and I did that then, but... Uh, Nobody really knows that because, you know, we didn't really have that much um, publicity for that then. But I started a very long time ago doing that, yeah. Yeah. Now, when you did that, did you get involved in the matches too? Or was it basically just to walk him down to the ring and take his uh, jacket? Yeah. Way back then, it was just just walking into the ring. and uh, Yeah. Uh, Didn't get involved, like with any brass nuts or hairspray or anything like that. <laughs> <laughs> now, how, how different was uh, was the wrestling in England to the wrestling in uh, in the States when you came over? Do you know, it was really strange is that um, when, like, they'd have a high spot or something, people would just clap. I heard they did that in Japan. I've never seen it. Mm-hmm. Like, and there wouldn't be any cheering or anything. It'd just be clap, 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 you know, and it, it's just really strange because when we come to the States, it was like, you know, <laughs> so much more lively, so much more better, actually. But, you know, um, that's just the way it is in England. I don't think they have a televised show here. I might be wrong, but um, I haven't seen one. They used to have it on a Saturday afternoon. I don't know if you've even heard of these, like Mick McManus, Big Daddy, Giant Haystacks. These were... Um, the guys that worked the big you know the names back then um but um yeah whenever they did some you know something the people would just you know clap their hands it would be death deathly quiet through the whole match yeah. very strange mm-hmm. yeah yeah i i know of uh, big daddy and, and giant uh haystacks and uh uh were you a yeah. wrestling fan at all like uh before you met chris and before you were involved in wrestling no no, I never watched wrestling before. I was not not a fan at all. Mm-hmm. Well, you know, but but uh, I just happened to get um, basically. Um, I had a girlfriend who whose dad used to like wrestling, and um, I did used to go to her house on a Saturday afternoon when they used to have the uh, show on the TV, and um, you know, 
he would be watching it and I'd see little clips of wrestling then. But um he he would have tickets to go to an arena here in South End where I live and um one day I think he was sick or something and she asked me to go and that's the night I met Chris. So but prior to that night, no, I hadn't uh, ever watched wrestling before. Yeah. Now, being around yeah. wrestling, did you become did you become a fan of it? Um, Steve always said I wasn't a mark for it. So I I don't know. I I became interested in mm-hmm. the business, obviously, but I wasn't like a huge mark for it. No. Mm-hmm. But you like more like you became you appreciated what they were doing and. Uh... Oh yeah, man. You know, because people say, you know, they might say, um, oh, you know, that's all, you know fixed or whatever they would say but they didn't realize how much uh, work goes into it you know yeah. and athletic ability and psychology and, and stuff so yeah you know I did appreciate it obviously I was around the business for what 30 years so obviously I saw a lot going on mm-hmm. so, uh, when you came to the states you know you said the wrestling was a lot different but uh was it you know how was the culture different was it uh was it a a, a big change for you to to go from to from living in England to living in the United States. We we loved it. I mean, the minute we got to Los Angeles, we were just like poor, didn't have any money, but we were just so wow, the wow factor, you know, because where we came from was just um, quite quite a small um, town where Chris Chris was born, and. Um, going to LA where I was 19 when I came to the States and you know we, we lived our, on Santa Monica Boulevard and um, you know we we never seen anything like it we, we loved it fell in love with it really yeah it's brilliant I'm the States just hearing your voice makes me miss the States <laughs> just American accent you know it's great you know enjoy it while well last visit <laughs> <laughs> Well, I, I enjoy hearing your accent. But the uh, where was your favorite place in the United States? Um, it's so different, isn't it? I mean, um, I lived in Los Angeles, and I really loved that. My daughter lives there now. Um, and I lived in Tampa, Florida for a while. And there's something really nice. And then Texas. And I love Texas, too. You know, so New York was pretty cool. So many different states have just got, you know, a different thing going on. And, it, you know, I, love, I think it's beautiful. I love the state. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it, that is true. You know, there's so many different parts because I live in uh, New England up in the northeast. And I just came from Texas and there's a totally different uh, different vibe there. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's my first time in Texas. I quite enjoyed Texas. Really? The first time? Oh. Yeah. Great part. Yeah. What part? Uh, we were in uh, Dallas and Fort Worth. We were also in Green- oh, nice. That's where I used to live, yeah. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah. yeah, Fort Worth was really nice. They had really good, nice, uh, really good barbecue there. Yeah. There's a there's a place there called Billy Bob's I used to go to. Wait, that's where we were. a little line dancing. <laughs> Are you serious? Yeah, Did we went to Billy Bob's. <laughs> Billy Bob's. We actually ate right across the street from Billy Bob's at uh, Cooper's... Uh, it was a uh, Cooper's Pit Barbecue, but then we also went to oh, the okay. Billy Bob's, which is right, right the same area. Yeah, yeah. I used, I used to do uh, telegrams, and I used to um, go to Billy Bob's nearly every week there for a while. It's great, isn't it? It's lovely, you know. Yeah. It's got a great atmosphere. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the whole area is real nice, and we walked around a bunch of little shops and whatnot. And, uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, my friend rode the mechanical bull. But oh. <laughs> yeah. Excellent. <laughs> oh. They have one. Out, they have one out here as a joke, and um, my uh, my kids, Stephanie and Cassie, they they um, see how long they could stay on it for. It was hilarious. It was great, man. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's no laughing matter in the U.S. We take it very seriously. <laughs> I wouldn't be able to stay on it. Not now. <laughs> Maybe a few years ago. <laughs> yeah, well, when we first walked by, it, there was actually, like, a kid on it, and she laughed, like, oh, I want to ride a real one. And then we found out that was a real one, and she didn't last. <laughs> but, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, 
Were the Von Erics around much uh, when you were in Texas, when, when you were working for World Class? Uh, Carrie and Kevin were. Mm hmm Yeah. When I, um, when I started, yeah. Um, David, uh, uh, Chris was there. Mm hmm Chris was there, yeah. Um, I think those three, yeah. Do you have any, uh, many people have a lot of crazy stories about the Von Erichs. Uh, what were your, your thoughts on the Von Erichs, and do you have any uh, stories about them? I don't have any crazy stories. I, I have a sad story. Hmm. Um, was, um, you know, just for a little while, um, Percy um, and um, when we, I, I forgot who else now, but Chris was doing a few run-ins and, on the angle that, that uh, Steve and Chris and I and Tony did. And um, we um, would travel with Chris von Eric to some of the uh, spot shows. And um, I remember just um, thinking he looked really down, really sad. And a couple of people said to me, go go talk to Chris. And I, you yeah, okay, you know. And um, I was in the restaurant the next day after speaking to him and... Uh, um, I think he'd gone home or whatever, and he uh, committed suicide, and I just couldn't believe it. I was just, whoa, you know, that just, you know, shocked me. I, I got along really well with Chris, you know, and I, I just didn't see that coming, mm -hmm. you know. Um, Kerry, yeah, I, I got along really well with Kerry. Um, he always told me great interview, <laughs> you know, so, mm -hmm. yeah. This, I, you know, obviously it's, uh, I can't help but bring it up, but World Class really uh, was innovative, but also, you know, burnout quick and uh, tragic. A lot of the uh, wrestlers, you know, yeah. died from, from World Class. Do you think, I don't know, do you have any opinion as to why? Is, do you think it was a lot of, they got, were you like really young wrestlers and you get a lot of money and a lot of fame at, the, at such a young age, you can uh, burn yourself out quick? Um... Yeah, I mean, you know, I saw that with Chris because, like I say, in England they didn't have as many of the groupies and that. And, you know, I can understand this because cause he was young, he was 24, and it was all like, wow, you know, and make a bit of money and then lots of girls and that and just sort of go to their head a bit and, you know, and you see a little bit of a change of personality and that. But, yeah, I think, uh, you know... A, a, the sportatorium, you know, so many of the guys, man, like, you know, Billy, Billy Joe Travis, is it? Um, Billy Joe Travis, I think. Oh, it's just, just so many of them have passed away from the sportatorium. And it's really sad, but, you know, to think that the, the building itself isn't there now, you know, because if, if I ever came back to Dallas, one of the first things I'd want to do is, oh, I must go check out the sportatorium after all these years but you know it's just sad it's it's great memories there and uh sad memories it's just a combination mm -hmm. was, uh was there a special atmosphere when you would perform in the sportatorium well yeah i mean everybody knew you know it was fun there um you you know i mean it it wasn't like really stiff it was you could really kind of do a lot of your own stuff and you didn't get told you can't do this, you can't do this, you can't do that. I mean, you just could run with it and the fans were just so into it, you know, and it was great. And it's my favourite place out of anywhere mm. was the sportatorium. You know? And I only I only had, went in there on a, um, Friday night and, and a Saturday morning because I, I was actually working um, so I didn't get burned out or anything like that. So when I went, it was a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we had a great time. Yeah. Nope. Um, I heard the story before, but would you like to tell people how you, uh, how you came about to be, uh, an actual on air character in, in world class? Um, you know, this, um, was Chris's idea. I don't know if it came from something he was trying to redo with the, uh, sunshine and precious that that you know had been really successful with the girls i think missy would have been there too um i was living in florida and um chris had come up with this idea to do this with um gino hernandez um 
you know, if he wanted, you know, to bring in an ex-wife. Um, um, that, you know, something happened there. And then a little bit later on, he, he found me up and he said, I've uh, got this student, Steve Williams. Who can, I think he might have potential. <laughs> and um, he said, I want, you know, you to come in to do the, the ex-wife angle with him. So, yeah, he basically just phoned me up and asked me to do it. Uh, you had like a, you still had a good uh, relationship with him. Well, with Chris. With Chris, yeah. So yeah, yeah over- right up until he died. Yeah, I mean, Chris and I were never actually married. I mean, that isn't we weren't. I, I'm not his ex-wife. You know, his ex-wife angle, but um, we we were together about five years, um, but we actually split up. But we for some reason just kept talking and we were just really good friends and I was extremely good friends with his wife Tony um, and a lot of people thought that was strange but you know we used to go shopping together and stuff like that and we, we really clicked and uh, you know um, then Chris and I even even when I was married to Steve um, Chris and I st- still talk on the phone all the time Steve and Chris didn't get along too well, but Chris and I got along well. And um, the last time I talked to Chris was three weeks before he died. And he called me here in England. Um, so, yeah, Chris and I always really just remained friends throughout, yeah. Yeah. Well, why, why do you think uh, Chris and Steve didn't get along very well? I know we had, um, uh, I'm sorry, the name forgets, uh, escapes, escapes me, but he uh, made a documentary about Chris uh, Adams, a uh, gentleman Chris Adams, a few years ago. Mickey Grant. Wasn't Mickey it? Grant. Mickey Grant, yeah. yeah. And in that documentary, or maybe he's kind of suggested it was a lot that Chris wasn't really that much older than Steve, and kind of like his, his career was, he, he in his mind, he, he was still kind of in the uh, the prime of his career, and yet he saw someone that he uh, trained, you know, take off, become so big. Do you, do you think that was uh, part of the reason uh, that he didn't they didn't get along very well? No, no. not at all. All right. No, it was over a payoff on a on a show mm-hmm. that Steve got pissed at and didn't didn't forgive him because basically what happened um, <clears throat> there wasn't a lot of money that you got paid back in Dallas. Mm-hmm. Um, we um, uh, there was another guy running shows and I can't remember his name now. But he had asked Steve if he could um, do a, an independent show, and he would get paid a hundred dollars. And um, Chris goes, "No, oh, man, man, you, I, I've got a show." Because Chris had a different show the same day, and uh, he, he said, "But, but I need the hundred dollars." Because remember, we were really poor back then. And um, he, so Steve reluctantly, because he, he did not want to let this other guy down. Chris said to him, I'll, I'll pay you $100, the same amount. Now, Chris's show didn't do really well, and so Chris said, oh, sorry, man, here's 40 bucks. And Steve said, no, man, I had another show. You, you, you told me that I would get $100. And Chris was like, you're only just starting out. So really rude. Hung the phone up on him, and that was it. Steve did not, you know, ever go back to you know, mm-hmm. liking him again. He's over a, a, a payoff. That was the problem, 100%. Well, okay. Um, yeah. so, um, so, so did you, uh, when you're doing the angle, uh, where, where, you know, you're, you're, it's the, the uh, ex-wife and you're feuding with Chris Adams. Did, did Chris and Steve get along at that point in time or was this already, uh, when they did? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. They did. I mean, Steve really respected Chris and listened to him. And you know, Chris was extremely creative. And I give, give him his credit because everything that happened was, was Chris's idea, 100%. I mean, he used to say to me, go out and say this and that. And he knew, you know, how to, to um, you know, get the crowd out it if you want. But he, he and Steve got along great then, yeah. It was it was after after that, you know. So. Yeah, I also don't think he gets enough credit for uh, the super kick because it's a move everyone does, and most people, you know, kind of associate it with uh, Shawn Michaels. But he was the guy that I grew up watching doing the super kick was uh, Chris. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. 
Yes, he he created that, didn't he? He started that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. One of one of the most uh, really one of the most co- uh, copy moves in wrestling. Yeah, yeah. I mean, Chris didn't really get as much credit. I mean, he made a great booker. You know, he was really really clever uh, in the office. I mean, he would always be telling a lot of the guys like Jerry Jarrett at the time there. You know, do this, do that. I mean, he he was you know very very good at that. Mm-hmm. Did you have Did you have fun? Uh, being an on-screen performer and being the villain? Yeah, I mean, I think it's a lot more fun and a lot easier. Mm. Tony used to say it's not fair. <laughs> she, 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 went, she wanted to be the hill. Right. <laughs> you know, there's a lot more fun being a hill. Chris used to say to me, I go, Chris, are you serious? I can't say that. I think there was one time the announced, I think his name is Craig Johnson, and he said, go out and say... Stop looking down my top or something like that. I was, no, I can't do it. Can't do it. And he said, No, no, you got to do it. Like, and I did that, but um, it was fun, really. I quite enjoyed it. <laughs> being a hill, yeah. You got so much more material, haven't you? Mm-hmm. Now, um, what did your family think when they saw you in wrestling? Did did, did they watch it? Like uh, your parents? Yeah, but but you know, my family coming from England, I sent them over a tape once. Mm-hmm. And they said that um, everybody hated me. And I'm like, well, you know, uh. it's just a job. <laughs> and she's like, oh, no, no. They hate you. They hate you. You know. <laughs> and, and you know, I can't show this to anybody. What would they think? You know, and I'm like, you know. Yeah, because they, did, they didn't do interviews in, and stuff in right. in England. Really, yeah. I didn't get what was going on. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Yeah, we some people on the line would like to ask you a question. We got uh, Fontana. Hey, how's it going, guys? Thanks. Hey, uh, first of all, I just wanted to thank thank her for uh, adding me on Facebook. I enjoy following her on Facebook. She has some really awesome posts on there. <laughs> thank you. Mm-hmm. But my my question is, uh, in world class, uh, who who was your favorite person to uh, work with in in world class? Um, well, um, what do you mean? Like, because every match was Steve yeah, not, and I not just Chris. not just Steve or Chris, yeah, but like who, 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 like uh, you know, when you guys would oh, have Jeff to have Jarrett, to work on that. Jeff yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, that's cool, man. Yeah. <laughs> and do you do you get to the states much anymore? I haven't been to the States in a while, but, but I'm planning on coming in August. Well, that's great. Last part of August, <laughs> yeah. See my daughter in Los Angeles. Oh, very cool. <laughs> yeah. Well, that, yeah, that's my only question, though. I, I, I said I just wanted to call in and, and say thank you for adding me on Facebook and, and okay, uh, enjoy following. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Thanks for calling mm-hmm. in, Fontana. Thank you so much. Yep, yep. Mm-hmm, bye. Mm-hmm, bye bye. All right. Uh, let's see. We got uh, Dustin on the line. Hey guys, uh, Denny, it's a pleasure getting to talk to you. I actually had gotten to meet you at a USWA spot show in Greenville, Texas many years ago. It was like one of the first times I ever got to see you and loved you in the USWA world class and then when you went on to, uh, WCW, I thought you were tremendously great. And my, um, and I I miss the sportorium as well. I have fond mm-hmm. memories of that. Yeah. Uh, my question is: Did you ever get to meet uh, Percy Pringle? And if you ever did, what was uh, some fond memories of him? Oh yeah, first Percy um, worked the angle with us. He he worked as my manager, and. Uh, one of the uh, funniest things was um, Tony pulled my top, my the back of my top, and it and it ripped, and my bra was hanging out, and he and he took his, you know that jacket with all the stars on it, he took yeah. his jacket off to cover my boobs up. It was funny at the time, <laughs> but you know yeah, I, talked I, to, I talked to him all the time right up until he died, yeah. and um, he was just great, wasn't he? I because I saw him as on. Undertaker or Paul Bearer um, mm-hmm. in WWE. Yeah. 
Yeah, he's a real yeah. uh, good friend of, of us here on the show, too. He was on, um, I think, four or five times on the show, and actually one of the first, I guess, to come on the show when we started in 2005. R- really nice guy. Yeah, he yeah. is. I've gotten to meet him a couple of times, and he was a real, real great guy. I enjoyed him a lot. We had a lot of great talent. You know, watching World Class in the USWA, we had, and I, I, you know, still always think of the Chris Adams, Steve Austin, well, Williams, Austin yeah. feud as the best because you know, of course, watching Kenny, of course, I, I, yeah, you know, <laughs> had a, I, I was actually watching her more than I was the match. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. It was great. I love Percy so much. Thank yeah, he was guy. he was one of the greatest. Yeah. I could do a pretty good impression if I if I wasn't uh, if I wasn't a little sick, I probably could do that. <laughs> Hold on. I used to could do one of him all the time. Uh-huh. Oh, you house, <laughs> my Undertaker. <laughs> oh, my <goodness. laughs> no. oh, I miss him. That was, yeah. Uh, anything else there, Dustin? Oh, uh, no, that's going to be it. All right. Thanks for calling, man. Thank you. All right. All right. Talk to you all later. Bye. Talk to you later. Bye. Uh, was there anybody who gave you advice, like, uh, you know, how, what to do when you were at ringside, or was it something you really picked up, you know, being around the business so long? Just Chris, really, you know, um... You know, a lot of it was ad-lib at the Sportatorium. Um, But no, nobody really else gave me any advice. Mm -hmm. No, um, I used to watch Globe all the time um, because I actually came on right uh, right after, I think, when I was in junior high. And so I'd come home and it'd be on. And um, that was also, you know, taped at the Sportatorium. And I know you weren't, uh, I don't think you were on screen in Global, but... Uh, you know, Steve was there for a while. Did you guys think like uh, Global would would take off and become a bigger promotion than it did? Cause I'm like, not really uh, familiar with it, to be honest. Now, okay. No, I'm not familiar with it. Uh, yes. Was uh, that not the one out of Memphis? Is it? No, it was because uh, it was out of the Sportatorium too. Oh, was that Joe Pedicino? Yeah, yeah. And Bonnie Blackstone. Yeah. That was just before I uh, came in. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah, yeah. All right. My timeline's a little messed up there, but I remember. <laughs> I like Global. It's okay. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. Andrew, did you have a question? <laughs> yeah, I was just wondering, uh, looking back, what are your feelings on Gino Hernandez? Oh, man, I was there when that happened. Uh, Gino, oh, I saw Gino uh, the very day he died. He um, and I lived next door to each other in the same condo uh, in Dallas called Lovers Lane. We were neighbors. And um, often I would, you know, pop in and say hi to Gina. I saw him in the parking lot, um, maybe uh, last, last part of the afternoon. He'd just gone out and he bought this peach pie. And I said, oh, that looks good, nice peach pie. And he said, yeah, yeah, we'll pop over in the morning and have a slice. And um, I said, okay, you know, let's pop over. And uh, he was going out that night. And earlier uh, in the morning, very early, I saw his Porsche. And I noticed it was parked like the wheels were sort of turned funny. And, you know, Tina, he would speed around in his Porsche like really bad. He was a maniac, really. And... uh, you know, I saw the, the car still latter part of the day. He hadn't come out of his condo. And I actually knocked on his door. Um, and I looked in the window and I saw the, the peach pie sitting on his table, but I didn't see him. And I left. And then latter part of the night, I knew he hadn't moved his car because of the way the wheels were. And... I was like, hmm, I wonder if he's okay. And I went back and knocked on his door again. And again, I thought, well, he's in. He's, he's not got up. The, the peach pie is still on the table. And I I said to my friend Vicky, you know, something's wrong. You know, Gino, Gino um, he's, he's not left his apartment. He's 
doesn't see him in his apartment. It's just really strange. And then, you know, he didn't show up at his match that night, and I knew something was wrong, and, you know, he died. You know, so uh, I saw them bring his body out and everything. It was just awful. Mm-hmm. And, I, and I had to live right next door to where he died. It was so heartbreakingly sad because it, he was just such a big character and so funny and it's just so sad, you know, really, really sad. Yeah. I can remember it well. Mm-hmm. Do you think you... And he had great chemistry with Chris, didn't he, with the uh, bad to the bone and all that stuff, you know, so, yeah, it was so sad. Yeah. That was actually my uh, my older brother's uh, favorite uh, tag team when when we were uh, when that was going on. He's a huge fan of Gino and uh, and Chris Adams. Yeah, because they just done that um, blinding uh, thing where Chris went back to England. So when all this happened with Gino, uh, Chris was was in England, and I had to phone him and and tell him Gino had died, and you know it was just um, surreal. Really, it's just. So sad, so sad. So, um, how did you uh, how did you guys end up in in WCW? Um, well, actually, um, Steve got the call from WCW, um, and uh, we had started dating at that point. And uh, he he, you know, I was Magnum TA had called my house for Steve, and. Um, Steve had, wasn't in, I think he's at the gym or something, and um, Magnum then said to me, what do you do, like your accent, da da da, and they had hired another girl, uh, Veronica, to put uh, Steve with, and they, I don't know why, but they wasn't quite happy with her, and then Magnum said to me, can you go to the tapings in Houston and meet Dusty, and um, I went the next Thursday and they hired me, so that I sort of followed Steve out a couple of weeks later, mm-hmm. you know, but, but Steve got the call from WCW, yeah. yeah. Well, he, he had been working in Memphis, mm-hmm. you know. Uh, on what was that uh, meeting with uh, Dusty like? Well, it was great, you know. Um, I, I was like, not, I didn't actually know who Dusty was at the time. Okay. And, um, you know, I just went in there and... And he hired me sort of straight away, so yeah, it was good. I didn't like the name he gave me at all. I, I asked him to change it, but he wouldn't. <laughs> I feel bad I put that on the computer <laughs> now. So, <yeah. laughs> but, um, well, so the I didn't like it. Lady Boss uh, was his idea. No, uh, he said. I said no, 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 I don't like that. And and the reason he gave me that name is because he said. I was blossoming, blossoming out of my dress that day. <laughs> <laughs> and that's why he gave me that name. Uh-huh. Classy dude. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. Did you have, do you have any other suggestions for a name? Or did you, did you prefer No, to- I wish I had. I just, you know, when he just said Lady Blossom, I was like, oh, no. <laughs> And Steve said that's not very nice either, but no, Dusty wasn't going to change it, so. Mm-hmm. Did you grow to like the name, or are you still not a fan? I'm not a fan of it, no. All right, I'm going to take that off the banner now. <laughs> 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 I feel bad now, but I... <laughs> no, no, it's okay. So, uh, <laughs> Uh, was there was there politics? Uh, were there more politics uh, in WCW as opposed to? Uh, of course. Yeah. Yes. Yes. The atmosphere was completely different. Mm-hmm. You know, the auditorium was just so fun. You know, didn't take things too serious, and then politics is WCW. Yeah, big time. Mm-hmm. That. Um, did that take away any of your like uh, enjoyment of uh, you know being involved in, in, in the wrestling business? Um, yeah, because you know, we, within the the angle that Chris and I did, you could ad lib a lot, you know, on the mic, you know, and sometimes it would run over and nobody cared. Um, they didn't really have me in so much of a talking role in um, WCW, um, but. Yeah, you know, obviously the schedule was a lot harder 
just flying every day, everywhere. Um, it, it wasn't as fun. But I was really happy for Steve because, you know, he was getting some money finally. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, and, and his wrestling was getting a lot better. Mm. So it's really, I really did like it in Atlanta too. Yeah, I like the the city of Atlanta, Georgia. And yeah, he was you know work with the uh, Ricky Steamboat and uh, of course, uh, you know, yeah. the, some of those a lot of great wrestlers running in that era. What? Why didn't they have you talk more? Because I would think, especially in, in the South, you know, like uh, a heel. Uh, with with an with an English accent that like that would get heat with uh, with a lot of the southern people. I don't I don't really know. I don't think they'd seen any of the um, you know the interviews that mm-hmm. that I did in World Class. I just think they probably didn't know. No, I don't know. They just didn't. Mm-hmm. Did did you uh, did you get along well with the other women in uh, in in, the, in WCW or other places you worked? Yeah, I did, but I was the the only woman actually on the road mm-hmm. with the guys. I was the only girl, um, except for the TV tapings, and it was Missy and Terry and Phil and Medusa came in. But yeah, I got along well with Terry and Medusa, uh, Terry and Missy. Mm-hmm. How about Medusa? Yeah, I got along. But she came, you know, I got pregnant, and she came in, so I only met her a little bit, you know, to at TV, so I didn't really get to form a real relationship with her, but I did with Terry and Missy. Still talk to them now. Yeah. But when yeah. When, when would you say, like, uh, Steve like started to get frustrated, like, uh, how he's being used in WCW? Um, after his trip to Japan, where he hurt his elbow, mm-hmm. um, you know, he was a bit limited, and then of of course Eric Bischoff fired him. <laughs> yeah, you know, so you know he 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 did, he did get frustrated after his injury. Is, is that was that a scary time? You know, um, you go from you know making good money in, in WCW to uh, you know you don't have any guarantee where you're gonna where you're gonna work and uh, you know ECW mm-hmm. is. It's uh, you know, a lot of people love DC. I love DCW, but it's not necessarily where you're gonna, you know, uh, make a great living. Yeah, um, you know, I, I was my brother had come in to visit us from England, and I remember like we came in, and he said, uh, you know, I've been fired, and I know, you know, he went straight to work for ECW, but it wasn't that long before uh, Vince called him, mm-hmm. and then and then of course, you know, Steve wanted to move back to. Texas mm. after that and uh, is starting to I think he was stone cold by then yeah yeah he was yeah you know and then obviously things got really hot then for mm. him we have a question on the uh, Facebook about that uh, Vic wants to know did you come up with the stone cold name oh the, the, the big question yes I did over a cup of tea <laughs> and, and Steve himself has uh, told the story before, but uh, we'll hear your uh, your side of the story. Well, basically, the concept was Steve's um, because Steve and I were just sitting watching TV, flicking channels, and this show came on um, called The Ice Man about a, a killer, a hitman type guy, and Steve just said, "I want a character like that," meaning someone cold and uh, he he called Vince and he said um, you know this is the character he wanted and the the office they were just like sending all these faxes of these temperature based names like Stang McFrost was one <laughs> <laughs> can you imagine that oh my god <laughs> I should have stole um, that name and, for the and show I, <laughs> <laughs> they were so hokey I remember Brian Pillman um, and Steve hysterics over these these names but you know none of them worked for Steve and then he was one day he was just kind of you know pensive a little bit worried looking and I just said, drink your tea before it gets stone cold. And I went, there it is, stone cold. And um, 
he had a big smile on his face and he, he liked it. So that's how it started. I was that, that cup of tea. Yeah. yeah, it wouldn't have been the same. Uh, Austin comes out and uh, Jim Ross is yelling, Chili McFreeze, Chili McFreeze. And, well, <laughs> 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 oh, there was like about 30 of these names. And I mean, it was just hysterical. You know, you go like, oh my God, how did they come up with that? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I just wanted to ask you, you know, as a, as a wife at the time, uh, were you upset at all, disappointed, or did you think it was it was it was good for him when uh, when he cut the ponytail off and shaved the head? You know, he came home one night, <laughs> um, just with his head shaved, and I looked at him like, oh, okay, well, <laughs> what happened? And <laughs> see, Jack, that's just, why I don't that's... want to shave my head. <laughs> Dustin saved it for him. <laughs> Dustin Moe. Oh, okay. And and I think, you know, he just liked that look. You know, it, it suited him. It looked good. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, I think it turned out for the best anyway. Huh? I think it definitely turned out for the best. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, yeah, I, you know, I know you, you had, uh, you know, children and stuff, but did you ever... Was there ever talks for you to, to come back uh, when he was in w, uh, WWE or later in WCW as his, his manager again? No, no, because Steve, Steve had already decided that wasn't going to happen. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, he knows how it is. Um, you know, two kids, you know, three kids. He, did, he just didn't want that anymore for me, so no. Mm-hmm. Did, uh, did you miss that at all? Did you miss uh, not being uh, out there? Um, I got really comfortable, um, you know, uh, in Atlanta, mm-hmm. looking after the kids. And I, we had a really nice log home. He was a really good dad. And um, we we did a lot of fun stuff. You know, we'd play pool, darts. We'd ride four-wheelers looking for, like, Indian arrowheads. Shoot guns, you know. We so my life was like really happy, you know, until we moved back to Texas, and then you know things went wrong there. So, but no, I didn't uh, miss it. I was quite really quite happy. Mm-hmm. Now, I don't know if you want to talk about that or not, but uh, what's what? How how did things start to go wrong? Well, a lot of it was my fault. Um, I um, did. Did get very like I say I got really comfortable in Atlanta, mm-hmm. um, and I had a lot of friends. Um, so when Steve was gone a lot, you know I was always doing stuff and um, going out for dinner with my friends or movies, shopping, taking the kids to McDonald's or something, lots of stuff. And then Steve picked out uh, Bernie, Texas, which is quite rural, which is what Steve likes, and um, I didn't have any friends. <clears throat> so, like, we went on the road. I was very lonely. And I um, developed really bad addiction problems, which I, you know, I'm going to just be honest about. Because, um, it, it, uh, you know, I started with sort of painkillers and um, sleepers and, and, you know how it is. And um, he had a lot of pressure on him then because... He was now stone cold, so he he had all lots of t-shirts to do, and you know it just wasn't good for him or me because we, you know he was under a lot of pressure, and I was you know out of it really, taking too many pills. Mm-hmm. Nope. Um, was that? Uh, I know you had you know some matches, uh, intergender matches and stuff. Did you? Did you get uh, injured from doing those matches? Steve injured me once in a spot show because he came off the top rope and uh, he fell on me a bit and forced me into a sitting position. And I, about six weeks, I couldn't actually walk. And then I did need to have a hip replacement because oh. something happened to my hip. So, yeah, I did get pretty bad. Oh, I did not re- realize that's bad. Did you have... Um, you know, when they asked you to do uh, bumps and matches, and 
Did you have any training for that or? Like, no. <laughs> yeah. No. I didn't, you know, that they, they just did it and I just accepted it. <laughs> yeah. Right. You know, they did they have me doing a lot of bumps. I didn't even know they were going to do that. <coughs> Excuse me. <laughs> yeah. Did, did, uh, did they ever ask you to do anything like uh, that you didn't want to do or that you said, like, you know, I'm not going to do? No, no, they didn't. You know, they they didn't do anything that I I found really uncomfortable. Mm-hmm. Now, I don't know if you would talk about this, but uh, are your uh, are your um, are are you still uh, have you uh, have you been clean? You know, uh, uh, since you have yeah, yeah. I, I was in rehab for six months. Oh, okay, well, very congratulations. That's a long time. <laughs> Well, yeah, I was in rehab mm-hmm. for six months, and um, I have I have been clean for two years as all. Well, but you know, I can just say that addiction is a, is a very crafty thing because you know you can start off just taking a little bit, and, and in the beginning you do feel good, and as the tolerance grows, then you still have something a little bit stronger. And and then it, you you snowball out of control. Your whole life goes out of control, and that's what happened to me. Mm-hmm. Now, and uh, you're someone who you know you took some you know bumps and stuff. So, could you see how someone who does that you know for for their life and is taking bumps you know every day, how easy it could be for them to fall in, into addiction? Yes, absolutely. Muscle relaxes and that because you're really sore. And, and, you know, and then you don't get much sleep because you might have a flight that leaves at 6 a.m. and you have to get up at 3 to get to the airport to be at the airport be- two hours before the flight. You don't get out the arena till midnight sometimes. So you're getting like two or three hours sleep and then the only, you know, feasible thing you can think of is sleep on the plane. But it's easier just to take something to go to sleep and then um, something to get bring you back up to go to the gym. You know, it's just it's just a cycle of the schedule being really difficult. Mm-hmm. Uh, Intro, did you have any uh, questions from uh, the Facebook page? Uh, Gary wants to know your favorite time or role in professional wrestling. My favorite time in. Yeah, like your favorite time or, or like your role that you like a, a character that you had. Or oh. Anything. The world class auditorium, mm-hmm. and I, but I wasn't on air that long. If you think about it, I've been around the business for years and years. But yeah, I mean, there's no doubt about it. The the angle at this auditorium was just so much fun. Mm-hmm. Uh, now you know you said you had a good relationship with uh, Chris up until uh, he passed away. Uh, do you still have a good relationship with uh, Steve? Yeah, yeah, I do. Yeah, we're very amicable. We got two kids. So um, we t- we talk, um, yeah, it's fine. Matter of fact, um, after um, I was in rehab for six months, um, I called Steve up and I said, you know, I can actually see my part in it now because when you when you're using, you think everything else is everybody else's fault, and um, you know, you get really secretive about you know how how much you're taking, and so you become sort of a you have another side to you that, uh, you know, you don't want anyone to know about your addiction or how bad it's getting. So um, I, I did say to him, you know, this was my part in it, and he appreciated that. And um, he just, you know, said, well done, really. Talk, talked to him a couple of months ago, and he was glad I was still clean. Oh, well. <clears throat> Excuse me, I've got some allergies. My throat's really dry. Yeah, and I know it's getting pretty late for you. Uh, I did want to ask, so I heard that you were you were writing a book. Excuse me, I just had to think. Oh, um, yeah. Uh-huh. That's, yeah. That should have been code for me to am, talk a little more. <laughs> I am writing a book, yes. Yeah. So, uh, um, you know, uh, roughly do you th- uh, when do you think uh, that would be, like, available and Actually, the process of writing a book and, you know, going back and, uh, you know, thinking about all the things uh, throughout your career and your life, uh, 
What is that whole process like? What, of doing, of, of writing? Yeah, of writing the book, you know, and, uh, you know. Well, my things. publisher sends me questions and it really jogs my memory. And it's starting out like, from childhood up and, and I'm right in the beginning at the moment. So, um, it's, I think it's therapeutic, really. Mm-hmm. Any uh, timeline, like uh, when it would be available, or just now? Um, it'll be next year. Okay. Well, hopefully uh, when it comes out, or when it's supposed to come out, you can uh, come back on and we talk about the book, if you'd like. Okay, that'd be great. Yeah, I look forward to, uh, to reading about that. Do you have okay. any, um, I know a lot of guys have, you know, uh, a lot of rib stories, especially guys, you know, involving Owen Hart, <laughs> wrestlers. Did, uh, do you... Was there any, uh, were you around any, uh, any famous rib stories that you would like to talk about? I saw a few ribs, um, in the sportatorium where the guys would, like, suit the, the boots together. And, um, I, I saw, um, Missy, somebody chained, um, a chair to her bag and she had to actually take it through the airport with her. <laughs> She couldn't un- she couldn't unlock it, and so you know she's carrying the chair with her bag. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's a good. That's a good rib. Yeah, that, that one's not too bad. Some of them are just vicious, though. I mean, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that one. That one's that one. You can laugh at. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> well, we want to thank you for uh, talking to us tonight. Thank you, too. I'm sorry if I sound a bit tired. I've got a bit of a tickly throat. It's only two in the morning. But thank now, you but... so much. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much for inviting me. I appreciate it. No, I'm very happy you, got, you came on here, and I'd uh, love to have you back sometime. Thank you. Have a good night. Hi, this is Missy Hyatt, the first lady of wrestling, and you're listening to InYourHeadOnline.com.